Uh, welcome to our third webinar on port development uh, in Indonesia. This is a series of about six to eight webinars that we will host till maybe the, the month of July 2021. Uh, this series is, is organized by the uh, Coordinating Ministry for Maritime Infer Affairs and Investment in Indonesia together with the Netherlands Ministry for Infrastructure and Water Management. To some extent, it is a follow-up of the bilateral relationship in maritime development between the Netherlands and uh, Indonesia. So what we will be discussing during this webinar and also the previous webinars is inputs in how we can further strengthen this uh, bilateral maritime relationship. Uh, this series is facilitated by the STC group uh, in Rotterdam, in the Netherlands. And I have been asked uh, by STC to moderate these sessions. Uh, we have, we acknowledge the support, financial support that we receive from the Netherlands Enterprise Agency, FRVO, without which we would not be able to, uh, to host this series. We have quite a full program today with three speakers and a keynote address of Pa Radian. So um, let us just start. After Pa Radian's speech, I will say a few more words to introduce the other speakers. Two uh, remarks before I give the floor to Pa Radian. First is, uh, please make sure that you are muted uh, when you're not speaking. Uh, yeah, I, I remember that last time someone forgot and uh, we heard all about what this person will be having for dinner tonight. So let's try to uh, avoid that. And if you have questions, remark, it's probably best to alert me, being the moderator, through the chat function in Zoom so that I can then uh, know about your request and then see how it can best fit into our schedule. Um, let me now give the floor to Pa Radian. He will do the opening remarks, the Kata Sambutan. And Pa Radian also joined us during our previous webinar. And Pa Radian is the Assistant Deputy Minister for Law and Treaties at the Coordinating Ministry for Maritime Affairs and Investment. Pa Radian, silakan, please. Terima kasih, Henry. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon in Indonesia. Good morning in Netherlands. Distinguished speakers and participants to the third webinar on the port development in Indonesia and the Hegu. Greeting and it is good to meet you again today. We will already have our third webinar on port development in Indonesia. The first webinar provided a general introduction to the most important issues. The second webinar focused on sustainability in port investment. Today, in our third webinar, we will look at a very related topic, which is shipbuilding, and in particular, financing of shipbuilding. Integrating, integrating main ports network is already stated in the National Medium Term Development Plan for 2020 till 2024, with the project to increase port performance by standard by standard testing major ports, increase efficiency of domestic shipping routes by forming loops regularly to 27%, and increase port integration with hinterland regions. The strategic issue with the sea transportation is the is the inefficient logistic transportation performance, which is caused by, among others, port performance indicator that do not meet certain standard, dock lengths, pond dips, and shipping lengths. Shipping network that still use less than optimal facial size with routes that have not formed loops, a network connected to its other. Undeveloped port support in hinterland, limited multimodal and intermodal connectivity at port and hinterlands, and limited use of maritime logistic information technology. In addition, the domestic commercial fleet is still dominates 
professor of her 25 years old. Another strategic issue is the need for a greater role for sea transportation in reaching disadvantage frontier and outermost area islands. In order to reduce disparity in the price of goods between regions, sea transportation modes that save the three region have not yet optimized transportation intermodal integration that includes ground transport and air transport. The limitation of sea transportation mode in saving three areas is also due to the inadequacy of port facilities, including the availability of loading and unloading equipment. Indonesia Port and Shipping Development Plans forces a need to continuous upgrading of ship saving k roads in the archipelago. The sea toll highway and the plans to establish hook ports in Kuala Tanjung and Bitung require a rethinking of the best ships that can sail between the main island of the archipelago. This rethinking will have direct impact on the needs for ships and ship building. The Ministry of Transport is currently assessing the need for ships and our speaker for today, Bapak Anthony, will provide us with more information on this. Ship building need to be financed. The government will require 340 billion US dollar in infrastructure investment, equal to 6% of GDP between 2000 and 2024. But the government can only fund 30% of them using state's budget. Hence, public-private partnership will play an important role. Since the outbreak of the pandemic, there is a need to explore a greater participation of the private sector and international funders. Our speaker, Bapak Edi Logam, will present us with an overview of where we stand with respect to the financing of the shipping industry in Indonesia. We are very happy with the contribution today of Ibu Helene and Pak Bart from the Netherlands. We want to explore better the challenge of procuring ships from abroad compared with building the ships in Indonesia. Indonesia is very keen on developing its domestic shipping capacity and we are exploring possibility to export our ship. However, we also want to look at possible advantage of, of purchasing ships abroad. I want to thank you again for joining us today and have a good webinar. You have highlighted the, uh, the importance of an issue that I think will be featured prominently in our discussion today, that is uh, building ships in Indonesia versus procurement from abroad. Well, that's an item. How do we strength, how do we strategize the decision making process about this important issue? You also highlighted the importance of the private sector, given the, the, the limits of state budget uh, after the outbreak of the uh, pandemic. Thank you, Pa. I would like to now introduce our first speaker. And uh, we are very happy that uh, we have a director with us today, it's Pa Anthony Arif Priyadi. He is, he was born in Malang, East Java. He is at the moment, he's currently director for Unmute Pa Henry. Yeah, you are, he was currently the, the director for sea traffic and transport at the Ministry of Transport. Pa Anthony is our first speaker. Pa Anthony is of the Ministry of Transport. He worked earlier in Tanjung Priok and was also uh, the trade transport attaché at the Indonesian Embassy in Kuala Lumpur. He has a very interesting educational background. He obtained his master's degree degree from the World Maritime University in Sweden and has a PhD degree from Universitas Le Havre in France and he wrote a thesis about the ferry sector in Indonesia. Pa Anthony, we are very happy that you can join us today and we look forward to your presentation. Sila Kampa. Thank you, Mr. Sandy. 
thank you very much for the time and of course uh, i should say to all of you good morning in uh, netherland good dark and selamat siang teman-teman uh, yang ada di jakarta okay uh, let's i start with a little bit uh, presentation uh, yesterday sunday say to me uh, Anthony you have only 10 minutes or maybe less than 10 minutes okay five minutes no problem for me uh, the more important more important things is how we discuss and then uh, look like what is the solution uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, let me start with the uh, uh, what we actually uh, look like I, I, I will uh, uh, present the uh, few of DGST, Directorate General of Sea Transportation on Indonesian shipyard industry. So actually, not uh, I am not related directly with the shipyard industry, but look like we are near, nearby a uh, neck board of the uh, uh, shipping uh, shipyard industry. First of all, uh, uh, we need to uh clarified or we need to show to all of you that the uh, minister itself actually uh we have the secretariat secretary uh, general and then director uh, general of sea transportation or dgst uh, this one is echelon satu echelon one uh, yeah and then we have under the dgst we have uh, the directorate of sea traffic this is uh, my my uh, appointment right now, and then we have also port of fire, uh, shipping and seafarers. This is also a directorate uh, who involved in the shipyard. Uh, then directorate maritime navigation, and the last one a directorate of sea and coast guard. Regarding the main policy direction for marine transportation, 2020 20 to 2024. 20, Actually, actually, we have a dense uh, policy, but briefly, I say that the first things that we need to do is the domestic uh, maritime logistic. We are thinking about this one. We have a lot of program on this one. And then the other things that uh, uh, the second things is uh, connectivity. Uh, improvement of connectivity to the international shipping network. And then the third one is regarding the need for safety facilities and infrastructure. Uh, and then the fourth one, as mentioned by uh, Pak Radian, regarding the development of international hub port and CTOL spot port. Uh, th that one is actually uh, the 10th main policy directions. Uh, and then so the other things about the uh, compliance improvement towards international standard and then improvement of integrated and interregional integrity, uh, compliance improvement to what uh, uh, standard, uh, standard regulation, yes, including the international ones. And then the utilization of alternative financings. Of course, uh, this one, we are looking for the alternative for the uh, development of port, man maintaining of port, and also for the uh, uh, development or, 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 or put a new shipping, new ship for the uh, uh, directorate DGST, uh, improving information technology, and then the, uh, this one is uh, for internal one institutional revitalization. Uh, for the next slide, uh, <clears throat> we would like to have uh, some uh, uh, view on the Indonesian maritime profile. I'm sorry, pa Anthony. It seems you have not started sharing your screen yet, so we cannot really? yet see a PowerPoint. We cannot yet see a PowerPoint, so oh, we sorry, 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 sorry. Maybe you can do it because in the when we practiced earlier, it was perfect. So maybe you can show your screen. Thank you. Yeah, I should start again. At least. Uh, it's okay, Pa. You can continue. Uh, that's nice. Maybe the next slide. This, this, this one is uh, 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 Directorate of Sea Transport the under under the DGST. Yeah. Then the next slide. Uh, 
uh, regarding the uh, tense, tense main policy direction, as I mentioned, including the utilization of alternative financing on the uh, number nine. Then uh, when we are talking about the <coughs> uh, maritime profile, yeah, at least uh, we are around 5,245 kilometers from the west part of Indonesia to Sabang to Maroke on the east part. And then from north to south, Miangas to Rote, around 1,851 kilometers. At the moment, what we have, we have 80, 20, 28 main port. We have 164 collecting port. We have regional feeder port, 166. We have local feeder port, 278. And then private port, more than 1,000. And then dedicated port, uh, 883. And 2022, that we have planned to uh, total number of port is 1,322, including 55 terminal. Uh, this one, why we have the logistic index uh, yeah, below the Vietnam, Thailand, and Malaysia. Because uh, when we consider number of ports and then the geographical uh, area of Indonesia, then uh, we may, uh, then this has become a, a challenge for their future. Regarding the uh, simming company and uh, the number of uh, what we call national fleet yeah uh, in 2005 we have around only uh, 6000 uh, fleet number of ships and then on the end that uh, on this uh, last uh, january 2021 we have a number of uh, 20 around 20 uh, 1000 nearly 22000 of ships and then this uh, divided by two, uh, two uh, permit. The first one is the Siupal fleet, means the one is for the general company, and then Siupsus. This one is for the uh, specialist, uh, specialized, uh, specialized uh, company. Uh, the total number and the percentage when we see here the parts and the top boot uh, dominant of the number total of. Uh, Indonesian national fleet. But with this number, actually, this is the potential because uh, this vessel need to be maintained. And then the place for the for for for, for this thing actually is the uh, CPR. Not only for, for the maintain, for the repairment, but also for the uh, what we call new building because after that, uh, some ship will be demolished. And then the, we need also place for demolish and then replace by the new one. This one uh, supposed to be uh, related to the shipyard industry. When we are talking about the shipyard and uh, the number, this one is quite large, num large number of the vessel. Uh, as the uh, uh, overview of uh, uh, how actually the shipyard, uh, Indonesian shipyard, uh, doing their 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 uh, business with the government. Uh, at least uh, this one is the sample that uh, our government uh, built 90 ships yeah, during 2015 up to 2018 on 19 shipyard in Indonesia. This one. The location of area from Batam to Makassar, uh, some on Pontianak, steadfast, some on the uh, Madura, Diluhung, Surabaya, Jakarta, and so on. And then uh, we built uh, the typical uh, vessel of uh, pioneer ship, uh, this one, uh, uh, 1200 uh, cross ton, and then 2000 cross ton. The one is the passenger and the small cargo hold on the on the on the front of the vessel. And then we also put uh, 100 tills vessel. This one is for the tollout. 
and also we put the six kettle ships uh, with capacity of around 500 to 600 uh, kettle. <clears throat> and then uh, uh, see yet the industry re resilience in the times of, of pandemics. This one is a lot thing that uh, uh, we get from the uh, our partner from Sibjat actually because uh, we also uh, up, up to date that we also uh, uh, have the uh, cooperation to uh, maintain our vessel with the repairman and so on. Uh, yes, the big problem is the uh, uh, many of new ship construction are postponed or cancelled. Uh, we ask some uh, uh, formally informally we, uh, we ask some some shipyard that uh, because most of the funding is focused on the, uh, how to uh, fighting the covid-19 spreading and then ship repair and maintenance decrease ship owner decide to postpone the maintenance schedule uh, because less operation as plane sailing and so on uh, uh they they postpone for the maintenance and then the government also uh, provide for the extension temporary extension for the certificate or for the ship uh, uh before before going to the uh docking uh cost operational increase yes as the uh, providing preventive measure and then less human resource as many regions are applying travel restriction this one is also become become a, a, a bottleneck and then leading manufacturer and supplier of marine ship spare parts country apply travel restriction also causing delay shipment on ship spare part and component the most problem is cash flow issue yeah ship owners uh, pending payment to shipyard uh, because the ship owner pending shipyard also uh, get the challenge of the cash flow issue and then uh, some ship judge said to us that the, the uh, their profit is decreased by 30% up to 50%. And then some ship judge also to do layoff and employee reduction. This one happened with our our ship judge customer yeah? uh, because we have a contract with uh, some ship judge. And then the ship judge keep company performance uh, by ship maintenance according to schedule. Some of them they can a uh, lot things that uh, uh, ship spare part and component increase twenty percent. This one is quite uh, quite uh, quite uh, uh, quite uh, uh, impressed because the cost of the transportation during the pandemic, especially using the container, the freight of the ocean freight of the container is uh, increased from uh, around. 200 up to 400 percent up to now for certain part from from certain part of the uh, country uh, the other ones a uh, little bit more to the uh, operation of the ship chat itself <clears throat> uh, then uh, we ask ship strategic measure during pandemic normally they take prevention action and maximize effort to stop the spreading of COVID-19 pandemic. By protocol, health protocol, they, they provide for the uh, shipyard. Uh, maintain strict financial cash flow. This is easy to say. For me, easy to say, but actually this is quite difficult. Some uh, shipyard uh, say this one is uh, something like uh, very difficult for internally to get the uh, cash flow. Uh, more online marketing, yes, some uh, shipyard looking for that one. And then some shipyard also, they try to not uh, really to build ship, not really to repair, repair the ship, but they also rent their equipment to the other shipyard. Uh, maximize online system, uh, continue shipyard work and productivity by maintaining health protocol, yes, as I mentioned for number one. And then maximize efficiency to be able to reduce overhead cost. This one uh, look like uh, when I asked the some shipyard what actually the strategic they 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 they, they, they do during the uh, pandemic. I think that once uh, come to the end of my presentation. Uh,
this one is my email and also my phone number if, if you may uh, contact for the uh, other or detailed discussion. Thank you, Sandy. And sorry for the for the beginning that uh, I did do not uh, did not do not uh, share screen. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, very interesting presentation. I'm very happy that you uh, uh, were able to finish it in according to our time schedule. Uh, and as while you uh, were talking, we received one question for you, which was from Pa Al Joshua van Dorsen. Uh, he also sent it to all of us. Maybe I can give Pa Ayosya, if I pronounce your name well, the floor now, and you can now ask directly to Pa Anthony, please. And, and please unmute yourself. Pa Ayosya, are you ready? Pa, pa as also, so, sorry. Yes, Ayosya, sorry. <laughs> It's a Please. little bit uh, yeah. uh, un-Dutch name. It's a Russian name, actually. Yeah. Uh, my mother was reading a book by Dostoevsky. No, yeah. I was just um, uh, asking. Um, uh, we are uh, looking at uh, helping to finance small and medium-sized uh, ports in Indonesia, but I don't have a complete overview of all the 2,000 locations where there are either existing ports which need to be modernized or where the local Bupati or governor wants to establish a new uh, feeding port or small uh, local hub. Uh, is there an overview which you can email to me with all the uh, uh, sort of different categories of ports which you just uh, presented in your slide? It was beautiful categorization of feeder ports, main ports, regional ports. Uh, I would love to have that overview so that we can help uh, both the Ministry of Transport as well as each of the Bupatis and governors uh, to uh, gain momentum in the difficulty of overcoming the bankability of many of these uh, ports. Because that is uh, often the main issue, is that the financing of the PPP schemes cannot be arranged uh, because of the bankability uh, issues. And we would love to help. Uh, we are a firm of consultants uh, which uh, not only assist in uh, the planning and the orchestrating of these uh, ports, but also the financing. Thank you, uh, Anthony. Maybe would you like to? Oh yes, yes. Of course. We find some information. Yeah, yeah. I will. I will. Of course, uh, you ask me to send by email. I will send by email the detail. But this is what uh, actually uh, I also add some note on this uh, one. Maybe later on, Pak Rudy will say something. That the number of vessel that uh, at the uh, at the uh, east of Indonesia actually a lot of pioneer ship and a lot of the small ship on the on the on the east part of Indonesia, and then uh, some shipyard there, as I understand, and I, I understand because I uh, manage around. 157 vessel under PGST. The facility of shipyard is uh, look like is uh, not sufficient. The Sorong, yes, they have, uh, and then Bitung, they have, uh, Makassar, they have, but the capacity sometimes when we are going to uh, to to shipyard on the same time, then the, they don't have space. Thank you, uh, Mr. Al Josja, Al Josja Van Dorsen. Thank my you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. I look forward to receiving it, uh, Pak Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And there's also a, a question from Pak Kusnu. Um, he asked about Telra, yeah, the traditional wooden ships. How is that also your responsibility on building these kind of ships? Or, or is it, can you say something about Telra? Pak? Mm -hmm. Actually, ship building is under the Ministry of uh, Industry, yeah, actually, but uh, we have uh, experience built for the uh, government ships, yeah, government vessel on uh, merchant merchant ships. Yes, we built around 157. We have at the moment uh, for the Pelra. Pelra is actually categorized by the uh, tra traditional ships, actually. So this one is under the uh, regime of uh, not international law, but we have uh, for the non-convention, uh, non-convention uh, uh, decree of minister regarding the Pelra. Uh, 
the size of pelra actually is not so yeah pelra is traditional as you say uh, normally is around uh, 50 up normally up up to 100 around 170 plus tonnage and then normally they do maintenance uh, maintain the ships some on the shipyard small size of shipyard yes but sometimes they also uh, do the maintenance uh, maintains uh, by, by by normally by uh, what because owned by the uh, individual then they have also uh, fear on the uh, on the for, for instance on the river and so on they do my uh, repairment there uh, <clears throat> this one is also interest for the uh, uh, for the uh, apa itu pak yang namanya uh, yang punya dana pak apa itu Sorry, maaf, kenapa yang yang punya uang siapa itu pak uh, investor sorry sorry yeah, saya financial, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, investor uh, ya yeah. investor wooden ship include the wooden ship that used for the uh, tourism. Normally in Bali, we have a lot of wooden ships sail from Bali to Raja Ampat, Bali to Labuan Bajo, and so on. Uh, this one is also a lot of this thing that I think investor may, may open or may support financially the existing uh, shipyard to do this what the uh, 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 repairment of the opera. Uh, I think the one is the my longest my long answer because actually not so easy to uh, answer the Pak Kusnu question. I believe Pak Kusnu is my colleagues in, in the so. last. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Pak Anthony. Um, if there are no other questions, I have a question myself. Um, that's related to the import of ships. Yeah, one option is not to uh, build ships in Indonesia itself, but to import ships. Uh, and I would like to ask you if you, what is Indonesia's import strategy? Uh, do you prioritize certain types of vessels, certain countries? Uh, maybe you can say a little bit about your experience with importing ships from the Netherlands. Maybe I'm curious uh, whether you have any experience with that, both positive and also negative experience. Please, yeah, import of ship categorized by two types: import by new ship or import by the second-hand ships. Maybe you Because, can start with new ships. Yeah, yeah, new ships. Some uh, private company, yes, they 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 buy new ship from the uh, from the uh, foreign, yeah, from the China, for instance. Last last month, I think uh, one shipping company buy new ships. Uh, uh, bulk carrier from the China shipyard. Yes, they buy them. I'm not familiar exactly with why they use that, uh, uh, that, uh, that buy the new ship from the uh, foreigns, but I believe Pak Rudy Logam will, will yeah. explain to us. I think uh, the uh, restriction of the taxation and so on, maybe uh, this one has become, uh, become, uh, become the clue. For the second-hand ship, actually, we have also restriction that uh, we we only may buy a second-hand ship the 15 years old, yeah? not more than that once. Otherwise, because the normally 20 years, 25 years, the economic uh, life cycle of the ships, then more most of them they need uh, they they won't uh, sell to Indonesia. Then we'll get the problem. After five years, ten years, then to demolish the ship, actually we have also regulation. Not uh, a lot of uh, ships then wreck and so on. Demolish ship is now our problem because when we talk about the thirty thousand more than thirty thousand potential ship will be demolished in Indonesia, then we need space, we need the safety, we need the security, we need to think about the uh, environment and so on. So. That's all my my opinion regarding the import of ships, Pak Sandi. Could you maybe say a little bit about your experience with imports of ships from the Netherlands? Netherlands, I'm not sure from Netherlands, but uh, 
our minister have long, uh, long, oh yeah, a long history, but not, I think 10 years ago, maybe, yeah, or more than 10 years ago that uh, we buy ship from, from, from Netherlands. And then some, normally a specialized, a specialized ship, yeah, for the uh, navigation, yeah, for the survey, survey ship. Most of them is survey ship from, from Netherlands. From you, Germany is uh, passenger ships, Pelni. Most of the Pelni ship is built by the uh, Germany. Thank you, Pak Sandy. Thank you, Pak Anthony. There's maybe one more question, and that is from uh, our friend Mohammed Muslim, who has joined us also on the first and the second webinar. But Mohammed, Pak Muslim, maybe you would like to ask it directly to Pak Anthony? Hello, Pak Sandy. Yes, uh, um, it's a very grateful to join this uh, seminar. Hello. We can hear you very well. Please go ahead. Right. Um, I've got one question for uh, Pa Antoni. Um, uh, as we know, uh, importation of uh, vessel is restricted by the age of the vessel. And um, I would like to uh, ask whether there is any plan of the government to reduce the maximum age of the vessel in the, in the near future uh, for the vessel to be imported to Indonesia to enhance the local industry. Uh, I think that's uh, all my question. I believe, I believe, Pak Muhammad Muslim, when we got the input from the society, from the association, yes, the policy actually is uh, uh, not merely from the government, but the input from the society, association, or research, and so on, then the policy is quite dynamic to, to be changed. But uh, remember that uh, uh, with 30,000 uh, fleet at the moment. Actually, in my opinion, we are not enough. Uh, no, not enough. We we have. Sorry, sorry. I need to think in my my sentence. We have no enough relations for the uh, international. Yeah. Even we have thirty thousand. That actually we don't have. Uh, re resilience for the international domestic. Uh, pandemic is one the uh, uh, one era that actually uh, we tested for that one, whether nationally we strong or whether internationally we strong. So I believe with your question, we uh, as the uh, policymaker as regulator. Uh, pre, uh, normally uh, consider the uh, change of the policy when uh, <clears throat> when we consider that enough to 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 uh, change the policy. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pat Anthony. It was very nice to uh, to be to have your talk today, and I hope you will not leave us, but join us, and uh, maybe we can. Uh, go back to you with more questions uh, when we have the discussion at the end of our uh, webinar. Uh, I would now like to move on to the speakers from the Netherlands. We will have two speakers and they will do a joint presentation. And uh, let me briefly introduce both speakers to you. Uh, first, there is Mrs. Helen Quint, and she is a senior export credit specialist at Atradius, which is a Dutch state business, and it offers insurance and guarantee products to exporters to minimize the risk of non-payment when capital goods are exported from the Netherlands. Uh, Mrs. Helen was born in the Netherlands in a city called Utrecht, which also has a famous university, and she in, uh, studied both uh, insurance law and finance. And uh, the second speaker, from the Netherlands will be Mr. Bram Berhitu. And yes, he does have an Indonesian name. And Pa Bram also speaks quite well Bahasa. He lived for a few years in Indonesia. He was even the chairman of the Perhimpungan Palatja Indonesia in the Netherlands, in the city of Tilburg. He is now a policy advisor at the Netherlands Ministry of Finance. And pre prior to his work at the Minister of Finance, he worked at PricewaterhouseCoopers. He studied finance and economics in the Netherlands. 
And I would like to now to give the floor to both uh, Helen and Helene and Wilm for their presentation, please. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you, Pahini, and the uh, organization for the uh, opportunity to speak here. Um, it's an honor to be able to talk to such a diverse group. I mean, it's good to see that there are uh, a lot of Indonesian representatives from both the private as well as the public sector. And uh, like Pahangi said, my name is Bram Vehitu, and together with my colleague, Helene Quint, I'm going to tell you about the possibilities of Dutch government assistance for uh, Dutch and Indonesian shipbuilders. Um, so Helene is, like Pahangi said, a, a senior expert credit specialist, and she's been working at Atradis business for, Dutch state business for over 20 years. So she's not only very experienced, she's also very knowledgeable and able to help all of her clients. Um, her specific sector focus is shipbuilding, and on the next slide you can uh, find her, her contact details if you have any questions. Um, my name is Bram Brito, and I'm working at the uh, Foreign Financial Relations Department at the Ministry of Finance. And personally, I'm very glad to, to speak to this audience because I consider it to be part of my personal mission to stimulate uh, cooperation between the Netherlands and, in, and Indonesia. So if there are any questions uh, or opportunities, please contact me in, uh, in your preferred language, like uh, Pai Henry said, could be English, Dutch. Uh, and jika Bapak dan Ibu punya pertanyaan di dalam bahasa Indonesia, itu juga boleh. Uh, saya sebenarnya anak UI dan dulu saya tinggal di Depok. Uh, kakek dan nenek dari Ambon, jadi bahasa Indonesia juga boleh. Um, so what, what does the Dutch government exactly do? We predominantly insure payment risks, uh, but there are some other activities that Helene will elaborate on. And in this export credit agency construction, uh, the Ministry of Finance is the insurer and Atradis Dutch state business is um, the agent. Um, so to, to, to talk about the context, we would like to uh, so what, what have we seen so far of cooperation between the Netherlands and Indonesia? I mean, both countries are, are maritime nations. Uh, Indonesia is the largest archipelago in the world, like Pa Anthony showed in the slides, that is Sabang, Sampai Merauke, um, and, and the Netherlands is below sea level. So it's only natural to, to work together on this topic. Um, so, so far we have seen uh, that there was an MOU signed in 2016 to boost, boost cooperation between the two nations. And this MOU has been extended in 2019. And this MOU, uh, this memorandum of understanding at the three priority teams, there was a maritime infrastructure, including port development, uh, then shipbuilding, including maintenance, repair, and overhaul. And uh, there was some capacity building. It was, those were the three priority teams. Furthermore, during uh, the last uh, economic mission from the Netherlands in 2020, I think it's the last one before the COVID crisis hit, uh, a joint statement was signed on cooperation towards the smart and uh, sustainable transportation sector. And moreover, a, a cluster of companies and institutions in the shipbuilding sector also teamed up to accelerate the sector in Indonesia as part of the, uh, the Partners for International Business Program, as you can see the PIP cluster on the uh, slide. And there is an opportunity for the exchange of knowledge. So there are multiple um, cooperation initiatives, uh, but in our opinion, from the perspective of the Ministry of Finance, there is room for more. And then um, on the next slide, you can see, um, so our policy is to assess the risks of different countries. And with Indonesia, we, uh, we have a positive outlook. I mean, we are open, uh, we are actually open without any restrictions, of course, if it fits into our existing frameworks, but it means that we would like to have more transactions with Indonesia. And that is basically because our outlook uh, towards Indonesia is, is, is positive. I mean, of course, COVID-19 and the crisis had a, uh, I mean, it has an impact on economic growth, um, but not as much as other emerging countries. And more importantly, our long-term outlook on Indonesia is, is positive. Uh, the political situation is stable with the second term of uh, Joko Widodo, aka Jokowi. 
Um, trade is an important pillar and, and Indonesia is located at the heart of trade routes of Asia and Australasia. There are lots of islands, lots of opportunity, and there is a long-term potential. Uh, a lot of young people, uh, the, the so-called demographic uh, dividend, there is a growing market size, and we see a lot of potential growth and hence a lot of uh, market opportunities as also in the shipping business. So no restrictions means that we are also open for covering risks on um, local government and private companies because currently our obligo is predominantly on the central government, but we can also cover risks on other public entities such as state-owned enterprises or uh, private companies. And of course, we we'll, will always have to assess the, uh, the risk of specific individual cases, but uh, perhaps Elaine can explain a bit more about uh, what we do and uh, how we can assist the uh, Dutch and the Indonesian shipbuilders. Helene, please go ahead. I think you're still on mute. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm. Uh, thank you, Bram. <clears throat> I'd, uh, I, I'm. Uh, I'd like to uh, give you um, credit insurance in a little nutshell. Uh, I think uh, a trade is Dutch shit business as well as the government would like to help uh, both exporters as well as um, their Indonesian clients. Well, how would we like to do that? By For the Indonesian client, we can uh, support longer retain, repayment uh, terms so that uh, the companies are able to repay the uh, debts with a return on the investments. The Dutch shipbuilder, um, we can help to finance their transaction uh, also during the construction periods, and we can give them a better competitive position because they could uh, offer um, a financing with the uh, transaction. And for the financing bank, um, there are lower capital requirements since support of the Dutch government means uh, support by a triple A rated entity. And that would also lower financing costs and hopefully result in a lower premium. I mean, a lower interest rate. Okay, correct. Now, I have a little problem getting back to my next slide. Sorry about that. Um, Atreides is a big uh, credit insurance company. Um, we have a commercial company uh, with 54 offices all over the world. One of them is located in Indonesia. You may have heard of them or know them. They also uh, took part in the trade mission in March. Um, those would be short-term risks, commercial risks. Um, for the procurement of ships, it would typically mean uh, middle and long-term credits with periods of more than credit periods of more than 12 months. Um, and because the Dutch government is supporting, it should also mean that we support Dutch capital goods. But I will address the fact that uh, there's a big demand for a local shipbuilding in Indonesia. Um, since it's insurance and support by the Dutch state, we are bound by EU rules as we are an o uh, EU member and also OECD rules. Um, in short, there is a manufacturing and a credit period. I mean, it uh, goes without saying from a signing of the contract up to delivery is the manufacturing period. And we can uh, uh, offer exporters, uh, Dutch shipbuilders, um, uh, insurance for the risk that, well, maybe um, the Indonesian client is not able to um, take over the ship in the credit period which goes from delivery until the final installment we uh, ensure the risk that the debt is not repaid. Um, if we uh, finance a transaction, we are bound by international rules, as we just, as I just stated. We need a uh, upfront payment of 15%. That's essential uh, at or before delivery. And a maximum of 85% of the contract price can be refinanced either uh, by a bank that we can support, a so-called buys credit, that would be from typically from amounts up to 10 million euro, or by the Dutch exporter, 
it will mean the supplier's credit, which would be amounts from five to 10 million euros. The premium is based on the OECD country classification. Indonesia falls in category three. There are seven uh, country classifications from zero to seven. So Indonesia is uh, somewhere uh, a little bit up in the middle. And also uh, the premium is based on the buy rating from the Indonesian client, which will be based on um, analyzing uh, annual figures. I'll come back to that later. There's another feature for ships, because as already indicated, ships have a long life cycle, uh, a repayment period in 12 years is also possible, but then 20% should be paid up front and 80% could be repaid in 24 equi if, uh, uh, annual installments. And what is interesting is that we can also support shipbuilding in Indonesia as long as the Dutch content is sufficient. I would like to point out that, um, as Bram already indicated, that uh, a substantial part of our exposure is on the central government, and it consists of the shipbuilding of the uh, sale of Dutch ships that are actually built locally in wharfs in Indonesia under supervision of uh, the Dutch shipbuilder and consists of also a lot of Dutch components. Otherwise, the Dutch government is not able to support, but what we can do is support shipbuilding locally. And I think we are anxious to do more than we do right now. Um, the traders Dutch ship business and the Dutch government are credit insurers, basically. You have USXIM, KXIM, JXIM, uh, they are direct lenders. We insure um, the payment risks. So we're not a direct lender usually, but we uh, ex make an exception for uh, smaller amounts. And this would uh, not really be beneficial for the, um, for the Indonesian clients, but as for the Dutch shipbuilders, it could be very difficult to get financing if it's smaller amounts. So up to 5 million euros, the Dutch government uh, by a trade Dutch ship business is able to provide the financing by discounting bills of exchange. And I think I'm, I'd be more than happy to explain the features to you if you are interested. It would be, um, especially for SMEs on both sides, interesting, the SME in the Dutch side as well as in the Indonesian side, um, it should also be acceptable risks, of course. We have to uh, follow international rules and also a 15% down payment is essential, but it could help to uh, have financing ready for a relatively small transaction. One of the questions beforehand was, how do we assess the risks on shipping companies? The most important a uh, question that we have to answer, of course, is, is the shipping company able to uh, repay back the debt with the future cash flows? How do we establish that? We do that uh, with um, results in the past. So we look at consolidated audited annual figures at holding level for the past three years. And we also look into the financials of the ship, Dutch shipbuilder. Is the Dutch shipbuilder able to build a ship? We look into order portfolio and expectations. What is the uh, Indonesian shipping company going to do with the ship? How is he going to make money? We may look into banking facilities and recent usage. Um, uh, very important is payment experience. Do we have that? And we may ask additional securities for shipbuilding. Typically, a mortgage on the ship uh, could be asked. We assess on a case by case basis and I think we also take into account, it was mentioned, and we do understand also that companies suffer from, have suffered from COVID and that maybe uh, the 2020 has not been the very best year for a lot of companies all over the world, including uh, low, uh, Indonesian shipping companies. I think we'd like to conclude with trends and what we see in the future. I think it was mentioned already uh, I think we've seen uh, an enormous increase of 
uh, ships in Indonesia. I think Dutch shipbuilders would really like to, um, well, basically to sell more ships uh, to Indonesia. And um, I think we also should mention that since ships have that very long life cycle, it is essential for uh, also for shipping companies to uh, see that the ships they buy are sustainable. Also, Indonesia is a member of the International Maritime Organization, and they have rules for um, uh, serious diminishing of, um, of carbon emissions. And ships that you would buy today would maybe be future proof. And I think Dutch shipbuilders are ready to do that. And the Dutch government and a traders Dutch state business would like to um, help to, uh, well, to, uh, to support the, the procurement of Dutch ships. I would like to thank you very much. Uh, I think an interactive session with 140 participants is, diff is, is difficult. Bram and I would like to take any questions right now that you have, and otherwise we would like to urge you to contact us. We, uh, you have our, um, you must, uh, I, I'm sure you'll get, uh, you'll be able to find out. Okay? We have our, uh, our uh, email uh, is, I think, in the presentation, so I'm sure you'll be able to find us. And Bram and I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Helen, and thank you very much, Bram. Um, while you were talking, I received a very interesting question again from Pa Mohammed Muslim, and he pointed out something that there may be a gap in what Indonesian shipbuilders need and what the Netherlands can offer. Uh, let me directly turn to Mohammed Muslim, Pa Mohammed Muslim. Maybe you can ask your question now directly, Pa. Please. Mm -hmm. Hello, uh, Bram and Helen. Uh, my name is Mohamed Muslim from ABNR Consulars at Law. Um, we actually represented Atreides in one of the projects in Indonesia, in Makassar to be exact. Um, so, so it is very glad to uh, have opportunity to meet one of the notable officer here. Um, okay, uh, uh, for, uh, for my question, I think um, the, the, the problem with Indonesian ship building financing to be exact is that uh, in Indonesian law, uh, vessel is considered as immovable asset. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, during the construction period, it is still considered as movable asset. So movable asset is uh, financing to a, to a movable asset is secured by a form of security called fiducia. And for immovable asset, it is secured by hypothecate. So uh, when the vessel is still uh, a movable asset, mm -hmm. Um, it has not reached like 80% of the entire uh, process of shipbuilding. It is still considered as, uh, as movable asset. Uh, as fiducia will be installed. And after it, uh, the, the construction process uh, exceed 80%, the form of security must be changed to hypothetic. Then there will be a time gap between uh, the change of this uh, form of securities, uh, probably between uh, seven days to one month, I think. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is is it something something that that is uh, a problem in the Netherlands, or uh, it is not? And, and if yes, um, is there any way for the financier in the Netherlands to, uh, to 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 handle or to, to deal with this issue? Thank you. That's that's my mm -hmm. question. Please, Alain. Um, okay, yeah, I uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mohammed, for your question. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm not quite familiar with uh, how it exactly works in Indonesia. Uh, I know in, in the Netherlands, there's basically the same, uh, the same situation. There's a little bit, um, there, there's, a, there's a difference between, I think it's all over the world where uh, it's not, and you can you come up to establish a mortgage on, um, you can sometimes, I think we do it, with um, you, 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 we, you just get another form of security. I'm, I'm actually quite sure that that is something we'd be able to to solve. 
um, I'm, I'm not really aware of it, but the fact, I, I think I know how it works in the Netherlands. There's also a period where uh, components are built into the ship and then in that there is a time gap and yeah we have to address that i uh, i'm not sure it, it depends on the risk and maybe we can be a little bit more flexible uh we'll probably lay heavily on local um on, on maybe on you what your opinion is on that but that's something i'm sure we'll be able to get over yeah okay. um, would you like to add Bob? No, I think uh, that uh, Helene is the more uh, is the expert on the subject. Uh. Muslim, are you happy now? Or I still have uh, questions. Yeah, I think um, yeah, in Indonesia we uh, sometimes the financial just yeah uh, relax about that uh, because one month period is, is is not something that is considerable. But um, well, uh, anything can happen during that one month period. So. Um, Actually, we uh, yeah most of them would would like to take out the insurance to cover uh, such period uh, so that uh, during the during during the, the change of security during the process of change of security um, uh, the, the the vessel is still covered by the insurance but um, sometimes it is not enough uh, uh, because sometimes uh, the 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 the, uh, the risk happened because of the uh, uh, because of the mistake of the of the, of the shipbuilders, whilst the insurance was taken out by the uh, by the by the uh, company that ordered the vessel, so it will trigger a dispute. So yeah, to 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 overcome that, uh, both of the uh, shipbuilder and the, and the company that ordered the vessel will take out uh, the insurance, but it is it will be costly. So uh, yeah, uh, yeah, if 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 there is any uh, similar situation in Netherlands, and and, and perhaps. Uh, uh, it can be handled more efficiently. I would like to hear about that. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah. There's also a question from our good friend, uh, Pa Irwan, who had been here earlier during the first webinar and the second webinar. Pa Irwan, silakan. Where are you, Pa Irwan? Yes, now I've just been... Uh, Released from unmute. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you to Elaine. I think my voice is uh, eagling. Uh, I had some experience in the past when I was head of ING Bank here in Indonesia, and where we financed the four vessels of the Corvette to the Indonesian Navy, and it was also guaranteed by Atradius. And so that was in 2000, early 2000, and I'm retired already since 2010. So uh, uh, my question is, at that time, it was financed by ING and Rabobank overseas. Now, is it possible when the vessel is, will, uh, is built in Indonesia and to be financed by a local bank and guaranteed by a Tradius? Thank you. Thank you very much, Pa Erwan. That's a very interesting question. Helene and Bram, please. I think you have to unmute yourself, Helene. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I'm sorry. Um, thank you uh, for your very interesting question. I, uh, I actually think I should have prepared myself for this question. <laughs> I think it's very good. And I, I think we may be willing to do that. But on the other hand, I was also wondering, um, would it be in rupees or would the loan be denominated in euros? What do you think? Or uh, other, other currency? I am pleased. I am pleased. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. No. Uh, the last time when I did my financing on based on a tradis guarantee was in, as an offshore loan, working my, with my uh, colleagues in uh, ING Amsterdam who's handling the export ACA. 
So, um, but now I, I, I'm just uh, curious, when you hear of it mogelijk is that it was financed by a local bank, but at the toen the time was the, uh, the shipbuilding was done in, in Netherlands, then in Vlissingen and so. My, but, well, well, maybe you should use English because we have a lot of non-Dutch speaking participants. Thank you. So, but now, uh, you know, uh, Diamond has built some ships, small ships here in Indonesia, of course. And I think there was uh, also this one of the shippers who make this for uh, dredging, has also uh, established some factory in Batam last time, I forgot the name. But in, in case that there is a Indonesian shipbuilder who want to uh, uh, build a ship here in Indonesia, and they have a good relationship with the local banks. Uh, but it has to be, I think the most of the capital goods could come from the Netherlands where Atradius then can participate in this case. So, uh, or an, a, 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 a joint venture company who has a good relationship with local bank here. I mean, there is also foreign banks here in Indonesia, but so, I mean, uh, whether it's Rupia or I think from a Atradius point of view is you, you have to see how the rupiah will go on in the next 12 years. So I think um, you probably want to have that in foreign currency or a stronger currency. So, uh, but, so even uh, with the foreign currency, but by local bank here, this onshore cur uh, foreign currency lending. It doesn't have to be in rupiah. You know, because in Rupiah, probably you have to review again the country risk of this, in, of Indonesia. Okay, Helene, would you like to react now? Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Iran, uh, I think there, there's not really a connection between uh, whether, uh, if the goods come from the Netherlands, we, we accept uh, a lot of uh, uh, non-Dutch banks as a, as a lender. So I actually wouldn't see uh, why we could not accept an Indonesian bank. We would have to look into that, but I suppose we could. Um, I I, uh, I could check for you if you'd like to. Maybe if uh, Mr. Uh, Sunday would give me your email address, I will check and I will uh, I will report back if that's all right. I think we could. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, I thank will. You. Yeah, I will for sure give you uh, Irwan's email address. But uh, there are three more, three more questions. And I suggest that uh, we give now the floor to all three of them before we return to Bram and Helene. The first question is from Pa Vincentius. The second question for Pa Andrian. And the third question is to some extent is a comment. It's from Pa Rob Boersma, if I'm not mistaken. He is based in Singapore. So, uh, who can I give now the floor to Pa Vincentius? Please. Yeah. Good afternoon all. I am honored to thank you for your explanation about the financing in the ship building. Uh, through this export credit, may I know the value of interest rates for short term period and middle or long term credit period? Uh, I mean the margin percentage of the interest rates and how about the term of the payment? Okay, thank you very much. Next question is from Pa Andrian, please. Okay, uh, thank you, Henry. Um, uh, Selamat sore waktu Indonesia en uh, goeie morgen, best dames en heren. Um, yeah, I would like to know that um, in the slide you say that the Dutch financing in local shipbuilding companies is possible um, as long as the Dutch involvement, involvement is substantial. 
um, I would like to know what substantial means and um, how do you measure it? Um, I, I believe that's all my question and thank you. It's a very nice presentation. Thank you to Pa Andrian and Pa Rob Boosma. It's more a comment than a question, I think, but nevertheless, I would be, could you please uh, uh, re explain from what you just uh, said? By a WhatsApp. Yeah, sure. yeah, I was just um, replying to Pa Mohammed's comment and uh, challenges about uh, how to organize proper security for the uh, for the lender. Um, well, normally you have like two stage uh, financing periods. So when the ship is under construction, you have a construction finance uh, uh, period, and of course, then the risk for the for for yeah for for the for the bank is that the ship will not be. Um, uh, completed for whatever reason that may be well the shipyard of course is liable to to deliver a ship in accordance with the contract and uh, if anything happens for instance uh, uh, i don't know uh, the shipyard catches fire or something there's always an insurance and then that will that will organize the repayment of all the stage payments which have been made then when the ship is finalized then the ship will be handed over and the construction finance usually will be either rolled over into a, um, a long-term finance ship financing uh, um, a loan or in some cases they are just two separate loans so uh, or, 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 or sep separate um, yeah facility so to say so in my view for all the ships we've built and, uh, and and which have been financed by banks for our clients this has never really become an, uh, an, an issue it's just the technicality which can rather straightforward be uh, be overcome. Okay, great. Thank you, Rob. Um, before I will uh, give the floor again to Helena and Bram, there's one more question that I would like to uh, to uh, invite. Of, I would like to invite now is it Pa Benny, Pa Benny Huta, if I say Huta Hayan, please. Uh, maybe you can uh, mention your. You can explain your question. Uh, Thanks, Henry, uh, Benny with the high end here. Thanks, Bram and Aline. Um, my question is about the number, right? Do you have any in your <clears throat> thinking that what is the amount of that your target funding in the next five years for this initiative? And uh, which segment that you want to prioritize in terms of the SIPs, <clears throat> uh, 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 what do you call specification or SIPs? Uh, the, uh, the size of you. Well, thank you, Pa Benny. I think you deserve a prize for having the best background of all participants. I really enjoy looking. Is that the beach where? It's in Ambon or where? <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. It's, it's a big one, actually. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, Helene and Bram. You're still muted, uh, Helena. Yeah. Helena. Okay. Uh, Mr. Benny, could you repeat your question? I missed that question. I'm so sorry. Maybe I was um, also a little bit distracted by the uh, interesting uh, and tempting background. Please, Pa Benny. Please, Benny. Oh, yes, oh, Helene, yes, sorry. Helene, sorry. Yes. Um, what is your target funding amount for this initiative? Yeah, you mentioned about that. Yeah, you want to uh, <clears throat> finance Indonesian. Uh, uh, CPR industry, right? And then do you have a number, the amount of money or probably target money that you want to uh, have in the next five years? Yeah. Um. Okay, thank you. So the target set for Indonesia by, by you. Uh, okay, there are four questions. I would like And also, to... which is target? Okay, please, Bram and Helene. I think on your uh, last question, uh, Pabeni, first of all, thank you. I don't think that there is any uh, target funding in the next uh, five years. Um, we are, uh, it's a demand driven instrument and from the government and also from the treaties, we don't set any targets as you know, there needs to be that amount of funding. It's more as a, a demand driven instrument. So uh, there's no specific sector focus or specific target that we have. Um, and then I think maybe Helene, you can uh, answer the 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 question of uh, pa, uh, Andriano on the uh, the exact percentage of uh, 
of the local uh, Dutch substance. Yes, Alain, please unmute yourself. Uh, yes, uh, also a good question. Uh, Bram and I discussed if we should give figures exactly, and then we decided not to. <laughs> well, it's a very good question, of course, and we accept, uh, expected it, of course. Um, the absolute minimum of Dutch content will be 20%. It's a little bit difficult to uh, hear, uh, um, to, to really tell you how we establish that. It's, it's in a cooperation with the Dutch ship builder where if they have questions and we get into it if they want to. But that is the absolute bare minimum. Uh, what could also be important to say is that according to OECD rules, um, a local content of more than 30% would, um, would have its effect on the amount of financing we can accept in the contract price. So it will get lower than 85 or 80%. So that's also um, uh, uh, something we would have to take in mind. Yeah. And then there was another question about the interest rate and repayment terms. Uh, I think if it's interest rate in euros, um, we are usually not the ones who establish the interest rates. It's the banks who do that. The interest rate for the uh, for uh, euro denominated loans is 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 I think uh, compared to the rupee uh, is rather low. Now uh, maybe uh, I think it's it depends on the uh, amount of cover we give, the residual risk the banks take if they do some financing themselves on the side, maybe somewhere between 100 and 200 basis points. I'm not really sure. Something like that. And repayment terms is, uh, well, it's also a little bit common sense, I think. If it's up to uh, a few million, uh, we would usually say five years. If that's not possible, we could also look maybe at longer payment terms. And for the 12 years, we, I think 12 years repayment uh, could be from about 5 million euros, something like that. Would that be uh, sufficiently have answered your questions? Thank you, Thank Helen. You, Helen. Uh, I think we now turn to the next speaker, maybe come back to both of you later. I would, I'm very happy to uh, introduce our fourth speaker. It's Pa'edi Kurniawan Logan. Pa'edi is the president director of PT Lopindo Samudra Magmoor, which offers integrated offshore marine services in Indonesia. He's also, and that's very interesting, the chairman of Iparendo, which is the Indonesian Association for Offshore and Shipbuilding Industry. So we're really happy that you could jo can join us today. You're the, exactly the person that we would like to uh, invite. Uh, Paedi uh, studied business administration at the Marymount University in California. And Paedi, please, thank you very much. Man. All right, good afternoon to everyone and good morning to our friends in Holland. And I'll, I'll, I'll share about 10 to 15 minutes of my presentation of, of uh, the overall condition of the Indonesian shipbuilding and how it can be enhanced with uh, proper financing. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll just sk skip a, a few of my points, but I think Pa Antoni just now mentioned an um, interesting uh, data that by 2019, the Indonesian flag vessels have more than triple from the amount of Indonesian flag vessels back in 2005. So I think basically this is a very clear indication that Indonesia as the world largest archipelago nation needs a lot of ships. Uh, our association Iperindo is under the supervision of Ministry of Industry. Uh, one of the director, Pak Heru, is here joining us uh, at the webinar. 
we have about 209 members today consisting about 121 shipyards and also equipments classification and <coughs> consultant our members are distributed uh, from the eastern part of indonesia now from the western part of indonesia till the eastern parts but i also do agree with Pa Anthony that a lot of development are still needed on the eastern part of indonesia mainly to to do the ship repair and shipbuilding i will talk longer on the indonesian maritime ecosystem which i feel that this is something that we can enhance together uh, it's 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 an ecosystem that needs a lot of government inter intervention to create uh, proper rules and regulation so that this whole ecosystem can be healthy and keep on uh, multiplying in the years to come. I will show you first is the octagon of the blue of the blue color in which I state is a shipping business. Uh, shipping business is under INSA, um, under Ibu Carmelita. And since 2005, we have seen an, an, a, a very huge increase, very fast growth in the terms of uh, the shipping sector. Like I mentioned just now, that the Indonesian flag vessels have more than quadruple from only about 6,000 back in 2005. Now our data from inside is close to 30,000. Why does the shipping business grow? First of all, I think they have what uh, they call the cabotage law, where the government protect inter-island shipping uh, by having a regulation of the cabotage, in which only an Indonesian flag vessels can trade between ports in Indonesia. Uh, this is similar to Jones Act in the US. And I think, I think we, uh, we, we, uh, we have seen that the number of vessels grow. Uh, it also drew a huge interest from banks. I think the Singapore banks are, 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 very, are very fast in responding to this cabotage law back in 2005 and 2006. The reasons uh, there is so little Indonesian flag vessels back in 2005 because financing in Indonesia is not easy. Back then, to finance a ship, you have to mortgage your house. Uh, dogs are not included. And, <laughs> and then uh, they, they need payback period within five years, double digit interest rate. I think back in 2005, uh, interest rates are still hovering about 16 to 17%. So. Not, not many of the Indonesian ship owners uh, want to buy ships, so they prefer to charter uh, vessels from our neighboring country. You know, back in 2000, back before 2005, even a small tug and barge are mainly Indonesian, are mainly Singapore or Malaysian flag. But we see with a proper government incentive, the, the, the scenery changed greatly. And that effect, the yellow or the darker yellow octagon, which we see that since back then, the employment for seafarer have also increased tremendously. We have seen a huge uh, uh, amount of graduate from uh, from the uh, shipping academy. And, 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 and that because during the, during the offshore boom, the oil and gas boom, a captain can be paid about 500 US dollars a month. So we see uh, many of the, uh, of the young people go to the maritime institution hoping to get a good pay when they can join a ship. And the green octagon is where I'm going to focus because this is where we are. But I can tell you that the ecosystem is not complete. 
compared to Jones Act, the government insists that trading between ports in America, they need to use a US flag vessels with vessels built in the United States. So I can say that the cabotage law is not complete because it does not encourage local shipbuilding. And the amount of ships increase from 2005 until today, which I say uh, more than quadruple, 90% are imported secondhand vessels. The last 10 years, the Ministry of Trade recorded that every year, it's about 800 million US to a billion US dollar money escaped from Indonesia to buy ships secondhand or used vessels or new vessels from somewhere else. So back in, if I'm not mistaken, 2018, the importation of ships ranked number 10 in terms of capital import that the Indonesians are doing. So I think that we can change it together. So why does the maritime industry doesn't grow as well as the shipping business? I can firstly say it is that the taxation and the fiscal policy is not proper. Because for a shipping business to import a second-hand ship or a new ship from somewhere else, the import duties is zero, the VAT is zero. While in maritime industry, for us to build ship, every component that we, uh, that, that we import, and, and we still have less than 30% local content, because even today, even a life raft, even a life jacket is all imported from China. All imported components to do shipbuildings are imposed uh, duties of between 5 to 12% and VAT of 10%. That's one of the reasons why the local shipbuilding is not competitive. It's difficult for us to compete with China in terms of in terms of uh, uh, giving them uh, a competitive price. The second factor that make the local maritime industry doesn't grow is due to the financing system. If today a ship owner would like to buy a tanker, let's say they have two options. First, they come to us. Paidi, how much are you going to charge when you're going to build a 3,000 dead weight ton tanker? Probably I'll, cal I'll give them a, a, a calculation of 10 million US. Anytime they can buy a 15 years old vessel tanker, either from Korea, either from uh, Japan, for only about 3 million US dollars. Of course, there's a difference. One, you got a new ships that can serve you for another 25 years. Second one is that you, you buy a 15 years old ship that probably you have to encounter a lot of uh, repair, uh, unexpected and lower productivity in the futures. But the problem might not be with the ship owners. It's when the ship owners go to their banks. The Indonesian local bank, when a ship owner come and present them with two options, 10 million brand new vessels, 3 million US dollars secondhand vessels, the bank will normally give them the same payback period, which is only five years. I remember our president uh, mentioned that Indonesia have one of the highest logistic costs in the region. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Probably this is also one of the reason. First, probably we are using older ships that run at at uh, less efficiency compared to a uh, new ships. Second, the ship owner pressurized by the bank to pay them within five years. Well, the cash flow have to make sense. So they will charge 
everything higher and then at the end uh, the uh, the the nations pay for the price because of the higher logistic cost maybe that is one of the reasons that's why but there is always a potential for uh, the the futures uh, increase in 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 ships to be transferred to the local shipbuilding but it it needs uh, proper government rules and also proper financing scheme. Uh, of course, shipbuilding components, the, the, the bright yellow too is not growing. Today we are less than 35% local content because of the economies scale are not there yet. Uh, just now, Pa Anthony mentioned a, a lot about vessels repair or docking surface. I will not go to that in detail because my time is limited. But I just feel that when all this ecosystem is healthy, it will create a strong economic growth. I truly believe an inter-island trade, uh, if we are using efficient vessels, if the logistic costs come down, more inter-island trade will happen. Trade that does not happen before can now happen. And I do believe uh, that is what Pa Jokowi has in mind. A lot of trade inter-island cannot happen because in the past, a lot of the ships are not uh, will only sail when the ships are 100% or full capacity. No ship owners will sail with only 20 or 30% capacity. That's why the government have to come into play by by doing the CETOL. They have to regularize the the the, the ship timing. Once that happens, probably fetch table, uh, cattle, I, uh, trade, uh, a lot of trade can happen when there there is a regularized uh, shipment in between island. Once the econ economy grow, the shipping business will grow again, and there will be a healthy uh, ecosystem. So, what do we need to do? Financing scheme. The first one I say is that we have to need we need to have an attractive long term loans to private sectors. I think I, I truly agree that Atradius can bridge the gap between this. Once the payback period is stretched from five to 12 years, buying a new ship or building a new ship start to make sense. The current financing institu institution treat vessel financing the same as cars and truck financing, five years payback period. While we agree that just now, the, the even the accounting system in Indonesia recognize vessels as a 25 years depreciation treatment. So it does not make sense for uh, shipping, uh, shipping finance when something that can be depreciated over 25 years, but you have to work your work your work your work work, work day and night to pay back your loan within five years. So again, I say Atradius will, 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 will play a very good role in bridging this gap, this gap. Of course, interest rate has to be attractive too, because ra right now, banks are charging between 10 to 12% per annum, while leasing facilities more than 16%. So how to compete with our neighboring island when Singapore, Malaysia, and the neighboring countries are only charging interest ranging from two to 6%. And just now, when I see the Atreides presentation, it's 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 interesting. When when we when when we only have to pay the equity between twenty to fifteen percent, everything become to become become uh, more become to make sense, because now owners are required to pay thirty to fifty percent vessels. Owners are required to give personal guarantee, and this is also very difficult. Most of, of the Indonesian bank they want they want to match. The payback period to the contract. How can a container owner, vessels owner, match the contract while it, it, it is something that is only pot to pot? So when we can simplify the banking term, the loan, the, the, um, the, the loan procedures, I think there is a great opportunity for local shipbuilding 
so that we can grow together. That is my presentation, Henry. Hope it will help. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paeri. It's a very interesting presentation. And I'm pretty sure that uh, we will have uh, a lot of discussion about your presentation. Um, the first question is from pa Vincentius. Maybe, pa Vincentius, you can uh, ask your question directly, please. Okay. Uh, I have a question for Pak Edi Logam. If Indonesia comments for ship recycling business, I mean Indonesia have a ship recycling business, is there any potential possibility to help local shipyard to get competitive price in new building? What do you think? Okay, uh, ship recycling, it is something new to, to Indonesia. I think uh, lately uh, the Sea Director General and the Ministry of Industry together with us has been doing a lot of meeting to finalize a, a proper policy on the ship wreck uh, sh uh, sh ship scrapping or ship uh, recycling because we really want to clear the the regulation on the environment yeah because there is a very strict uh, requirement on the environment factor but it's moving towards there and a few shipyards have started uh, doing the ship scrapping I know uh, one of our member in Chilagon have started doing that and then a few uh, other shipyards are also interested. Of course, in the past, uh, we, we see uh, there's also a lot of those uh, smaller scale, but then uh, not under proper regulation, the government are doing some uh, good, reg uh, some changes on that. Thank you, Paidi. Uh, Paidi. Um, I have a question myself, by Eddie. Um, you mentioned in your presentation that there might be interesting possibilities to collaborate with Arpadias. Yeah? Um, what does it take to move in that direction? What concrete steps uh, do you think need to be set by both the Indonesian, Indonesian stakeholders and the Dutch stakeholders? Thank you. Okay, I think uh, we have actually we have gone ahead with that. A few years ago, we have signed an MOU with INSA, the Indonesian Ship Owner Association. So with, with INSA and Iperindo, we are working very closely. We understand we have, to, we have to go beyond the short term because buying secondhand vessels is a very short term uh, solution. And it, it creates a den in the Indonesian uh, trade deficit. So we, 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 we agree, we have to build locally and we can build locally. So I think what we can do together is that INSA and Iperindo and Atradius, we must do uh, like a road show or like a seminar where we invite uh, INSA member and Iperindo member to, 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 to sit together in a room. Probably not, not now, but then we can sit in a Zoom meeting like this. Yeah, we just have to give uh, INSA member. Okay, okay, okay. Now we have an option. Don't always put secondhand ship 15, 20 years old as your first option. Now we can build new ships. Because why? Now somebody is willing to help us do the financing. And then we can uh, be begin to narrow down what kind of vessels, probably dredgers, I don't know, uh, next thing will be the, uh, those LNG carriers, mini LNG carriers, or other thing. We identify like a few sectors that we really want to focus on. And once we start to do that and give them to see the option, what is the cash flow for the next 12 years? 
I think right after this pandemic, there will be a strong demand for better ships. Thank you, Pak Adi. Pak Adi, there's another question. Uh, but before I uh, give the floor to the next uh, uh, next uh, discussion, uh, I would like to ask uh, Bu Helene and Pak Bram, uh, uh, would you like to react to the presentation of Pak Adi? Has it, do you think it's, it's this proposal for a workshop or for intensive, more intensive collaboration? How, would you, how do you feel it, please? Well, first of all, thank you, Pak Adi, for, for the presentation. And I thought that your, uh, your last suggestion of um, perhaps creating a roadshow where we can work together as uh, Atradius Ministry of Finance together with uh, Insa and Ibrindo is a very good idea. And uh, perhaps we could uh, create something. Helene, would you like to add? No, okay. Maybe, maybe it's good to stay in, in contact afterwards by Eddie or, or someone from your office that, so that we can stay in office. Yeah, I've got nothing to add. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, Parop Paro Pusma has also a question. Parop, please. Yeah, but, but Eddie, thank you very much for your uh, for your presentation. That was a very interesting uh, one, if I may uh, if I may say so. Um, I think what what might be very beneficial for Iperindo um, is if, for instance, the state-owned enterprises. They, from my experience in doing business in Indonesia, is that state-owned enterprises are being allocated yeah, annual budgets quite often for, uh, for 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 expanding their activities in that fiscal year so to say but quite often those yeah those activities do involve them acquiring new assets including ships uh, what i notice is that yeah i've seen tenders from state-owned enterprises wanting to buy new ships with budgets far from um yeah far from uh, big enough to purchase new ships so even the the, the indonesian state they're not supporting their own shipbuilding industry because the state-owned enterprises who are significant ship owners in, in Indonesia, they, they, they don't have to have the chance to buy uh, new ships. I think that maybe Iperindo or Inza and well, us as, uh, as, 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 as Dutch shipbuilding cluster, of course, would be very happy to engage with, uh, you know, with, 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 with those relevant state-owned enterprises or Ministry of Finance or whatever. To, to, to explain that it is a, that's a short-term view, which is hurting their own shipbuilding uh, industry. I mean, yeah, I don't know, what, 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 what's your thought on that? And especially on the possibilities to, 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 to change that. Okay, I think we have been very active uh, in making noises when one of those state-owned begin to import uh, second-hand vessels. I remember um, uh, two years ago when ISDP and Pelni want to import uh, second-hand vessels, we, we even put it on a newspaper by, 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 uh, to, to ask them to reconsider why don't you build locally. Well, it's a lot of political issue in, involved, a lot of personal interest involved, uh, but then we do see a positive trend like Pertamina Transcontinental in the next, in the last two years, they've been building their new harbor tag locally. And of course, uh, one of the biggest import the, uh, late last year, early this year was by Pertamina, where they purchased a VLCC from somewhere else, but then uh, those kind of vessels are beyond our capabilities to build it too. But uh, we are, we are, we, are, we are concerned about that and we don't keep quiet. Thank you, Pa Eddie. Uh, there's a question from Bu Fifi. Bu Fifi, Silaka. Hello, Pa Eddie. Thank you for the nice presentation. So, uh, because currently we are talking about decarbonization shipping quite a lot, so I want to know what is the current progress from Indonesian ship owners regarding this 
uh, I am also affected. What is the strategy to comply this regulation since Indonesia is one of the member of IMO and also uh, how to cope up with the current budgeting scheme? Thank you. Uh, I think those questions must be addressed to Insa, not. <laughs> I just, I just, I, I don't think I, I'm, I'm in position to answer those uh, because there is between Insa and the uh, sea communication uh, shipbuilding we normally build according to the specs from uh, the customer sorry about that okay thank you pa eddie uh bon marian lasset you also made a comment would you like to uh, uh, explore explain it further now please yes good morning thank you very much henry um i just want to come back on the um uh, the statement which uh, Ms. Pak Eddy uh, Logan said uh, about uh, doing a roadshow with uh, INSA and Iperindo together, and of course, Adradius and Ministry of Finance. And I think, um, well, as, a, <laughs> as somebody who's working for NMT, the official branch organization for the maritime industry, I think we could be of, uh, of any help. I know Pak Eddy Logan already for a long time, as well as uh, Ibuka Melita. Uh, of INSA, so uh, that would be great. I think we can work together. Just have to set a date. Okay, thank you, Bu Mariam. Uh, there's a question from already some time ago from Pat De Fretas. I hope you're still with us today. If you're still here with us, then please, Pat, Silaka, please. Yes, uh, I had a question about, yeah, uh, the ship financing. I know we're uh, working on several projects in Indonesia and one of the things is uh, waste management. And I'm aware of a German built ship who will, is uh, able to recycle waste on smaller islands. That during the trip, they recycle everything and they, uh, then they sell the raw materials. Um, but there's a German shipyard. So my question is, uh, in, there is interest from Indonesia, from, Indonesia, from Maluku especially. And uh, is it possible to, or to have the technology shipped to a Dutch shipyard so it's able to uh, have funding for it? Or does we have that the an Indonesian shipyard has to contact German shipyard and that make it an Indonesian product. But I don't know if those ships are available or built in the Holland, in the Netherlands or in Indonesia. I only know about the German ship. So, but it is a solution for the waste problem and not only for Maluku, but for the, uh, 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 Indonesia as well. So please, uh, is there a solution? Please, Pat Eddie. Not a difficult, maybe not an easy question, but please. Well, uh, basically, Indonesian shipyard, we are we, we we can build according to design. So whether that those design come from Holland, whether those design come from uh, Germany, we, we can build according to design. Probably just during the installation of special equipment then normally it will be under supervision of the makers so that those uh, equipment can be can be installed according to specs like lately uh, like just now i mentioned pertamina transcontinental built about 15 of the harbor truck under robert allen design so it's quite sophisticated uh, with uh, uh, you know those uh, azima thruster and I think most of them are being built well, so that when those uh, high-tech equipment are installed, it's under a proper supervision. So building-wise, we shouldn't have any problem. Thank you, Baedi. I'm, I'm looking whether there are any more questions. If not, then uh, I would like maybe Pahero from the Ministry of Industry. Are you still with us? Perhaps you can... Uh, and give your view on uh, the topics to us as well. Let me see whether Pahero is still with us. Okay. 
Oke, okay, thank you very much uh, for the time. Uh, Oke, okay, thank you very much for this time uh, and opportunity to this uh, discussion about the uh, shipbuilding and uh, financing. Uh, so you know, uh, uh, I would like to thanks uh, for uh, everyone's uh, and then uh, I will I will like to appreciate to the all speaker uh, very clear and thank you for presentation. Uh, my name is Heru Nugroho from the Ministry of Industry. Uh, I'm deputy director for the maritime industry. Uh, so you know, uh, uh, regarding to the infra uh, financing, financing, uh, financing is uh, very very uh, important uh, for the uh, make uh, new uh, shipbuilding in Indonesia. But uh, one of the barrier uh, in Indonesia will be to uh, make the new shipbuilding. Uh, I have the questions, uh, short question, yeah, about the uh, financing. How how to make the uh, how to make the local bank and then. Uh, Uh, Dutch bank maybe in uh, Indonesia uh, to accommodate uh, about to the uh, uh, yeah uh, to buy and to payments uh, uh, if we uh, made to the new uh, shipbuilding and then uh, I have uh, uh, the question again uh, I have to the comment uh, from the uh, ship recycling uh, business in Indonesia. Yes, and then uh, ship recycling now is uh, the new issue is the Indonesia because uh, we know that the Hong Kong Convention. Uh, Hong Kong Convention uh, asked the basically for the implementation of the uh, ship recycling uh, in Indonesia. Because so you know that the uh, the ship uh, the ship recycling in Indonesia will be under to the uh, lot of the institution. For example, uh, Ministry of Environment, Ministry of uh, uh, Transportation, and then Ministry of Industry. Now Ministry of Industry uh, still and as soon as to make. Uh, regulation of the uh, ship recycling, uh, how to the standard procedure uh, to implementation of Indonesia about the uh, ship recycling. Uh, yes, and then uh, I have to comment about to the uh, import, yeah. import uh, ship, yeah, uh, so you know that import uh, will be under to the Ministry of Trade because uh, you have to the regulation uh, number uh, uh, 96, uh, 96 the, and the launch of the 1990, uh, 1990 uh, uh, the new import and uh, the new import uh, A shipyard, I think no problem. But the second uh, new share that will be uh, uh, to arrange in the uh, Ministry of Trade uh, regulation. Yes, uh, Ministry of Industry will be to uh, share about to the uh, how to uh, import will be to it's okay. Uh, will be to it's okay uh, and then to send the means of the trade uh, recommendation and then uh, means of trade is okay will be to import for the uh, uh, <coughs> uh, ship building uh, uh, sorry uh, shipyard uh, the second shipyard yeah i think uh, uh, enough uh, thank you very much uh, 
for this time uh, and then uh, uh, I good then uh, appreciate uh, to the uh, inviting uh, me to join with the uh, presentation and then Pak uh, Edi Logam and then so all uh, my colleagues in uh, uh, Ministry of Transportation. Thank you, Mr. Henry. Thank you, Pahiro. I'm looking at uh, my watch now. It's five minutes to five. I suggest we leave it here. Um, it's almost time for us to uh, go home. I look at my chat function and as a last remark coming on as the presentation of Pahiri is now being distributed. I would like to thank all our speakers of today. Pa Anthony, Pa Bram, Pa Helene, and Pa Edi Logam. And mm -hmm. perhaps I, uh, I now give the floor to Pa Radian. Maybe Pa Radian, you would like to, like to uh, make some final remarks before we close the meeting. Pa Radian, please. Thank you, Pa Henry Sandi. I would like to give such a closing remark that Indonesia main policy is realization of domestic maritime logistic and connectivity. Today and in the future, vessel industry is very important for Indonesia, especially to support connectivity program such as CITOL and 10 domestic hub development from the west to the east. Those projects need financial support by alternative financing. What we discussed this afternoon is very important for both countries to get some important input for today and in the future. Thank you very much to Pak Sandi, Speaker, eh, Pak Bram, Pak Anthony, and Pak Andy Logam, Pak Rizaldi, and uh, Ibu Helen, and all participants. See you in the next webinar discussion. Terima kasih. Salam sehat selalu. Uh, before we close, I, as like last time, I'll ask all participants to switch on the camera so that we can make a virtual group picture. And uh, after that, thank you. I would like to let me close now. After this, we take a picture together. And uh, I hope to see you at our next meeting, which is scheduled for 24 March and will focus on the Pelham shipping. Thank you very much and uh, see you again soon. Bye.